I'm really desperate. Here's my art. Do you think I can get the job? This right here is the biggest secret sauce I tell people who are trying to recruit. When I told them my secret, they were shook. Jilani said as an introvert, how did you approach networking in the industry when you got back into art? This is a great question. I'm gonna show you guys how I network, all right? As an introverted artist, this is what I do whenever I go to conventions, whenever I meet with recruiters or I do interviews or studios. Let's just say we're gonna play a scenario, right? Some of you might be going to Lightbox Expo this year. And so this is some of the stuff you can do and say. First and foremost, before you go in there and before you chat with somebody, you want to know who you are. Tough question, I know. Who am I? What am I doing? But specifically as an artist, it's kind of valuable to know either what you like to do or what you want to do. So in my case, I'm a character designer, but let's just assume I'm a baby artist, right? I got no job, nothing, and I'm just trying to get into the industry. What can I do? What can I possibly say or do that will kind of maybe entice the recruiter? One, I'm an artist and I like to draw characters, which makes me a character artist or a character designer. And I'm also specifically looking to get into, let's say, the game industry, right? I want to work for games. I want to work for Riot Games. And so with that in mind, those are the two things that I am interested in for my future and, and what I would like to do as an artist. Now. Here's what I don't want you to do. You're holding your iPad and you come up there and you're just like, um, I want a job. I'm really desperate. Please take a look at my stuff. And here is my, here's my art. Do you think I can get the job? What did I just do wrong? Someone said in the chat, desperate, desperate begging begging looking ass out here you can't even do that for a mcdonald's interview all right so yes you were desperate but first of all it's okay to be desperate okay look i get it in this industry everyone is desperate but more importantly you came to somebody and you took the time to chat with them and they took the time to chat with you and you did not one introduce yourself two you did not even acknowledge them right and at the end of the day, you just told them like, hey, I only care about you if you give me a job, right? It's not a good look. So you gotta be like normal, okay? Be a normal dude. Like remember, you're not here to flirt. You're not at a bar. You're not You're not trying to pick up. You're not trying to riz. Well, <laughs> maybe you are. You're just here to network. So here's what I would do instead, all right? You approach somebody and let's just say it's the convention for Livebox. I'm be like, Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Ksam. How have you been? How's the convention been for you? Right? Don't even talk about you, bro. Let them, let them talk. And they might say like, oh, you know, the convention's been pretty busy. A lot of a lot of good artists that we've been looking at. Here's the thing. Sometimes recruiters or whoever you, you talk to, if they're good and they're friendly and sociable, they'll literally ask you questions and you won't have to do anything right? And you just answer their questions. But on the off chance, which chances are will actually happen more often than not. Sorry to break it to you guys. On the off chance that a recruiter does not ask you questions and they just give you, they just give you the stare of death, right? Let's run it that way. Let's give you the hard recruiter because the easy recruiters, they're going to make it easy for you to talk, right? Here's the hard recruiter. So I come in and I say the same line. How's the convention been for you? It's been all right. And you're like, cool, cool. That's great. Well, thank you for taking the time out to chat with me. I'm actually a big fan of Riot and I currently am a character designer, not working in the industry yet, but I'm preparing to work there. And I've been a big fan of all the splash art that you guys have been doing. I've been studying a lot of the style and I hope some of it is reflective in my portfolio. Okay. Uh, yeah, can I, uh, can I actually show you my portfolio? Maybe we could walk through it. Maybe just give me some pointers. Uh, and it would be great actually if you could just give me like one thing, one thing you feel like um, I could work more towards to get to that level, to get to that level.
yeah all right and okay let's just pause there right because i think as long as you're navigating and you're kind of helping them have something to say or something to do i feel like that is like a big thing that that would help you out a lot sometimes recruiters man th they are genuinely tired they just want to know what you need right and so sometimes giving them an easy task like hey can you just look at this and give me one thing you feel like i could work on that's like my go-to by the way i use that all the time so i'll be like hey take a look at my work and then it makes it easier for them to feel like they're looking for something as opposed to just a blank statement of like what do you think i don't know like if someone asked me like what do you think about your art right i'm like it, it looks good i guess right you want to try to give them something so there you go let's say you've done that they look at your art and depending on what they say you can kind of tell when when some people are really excited about your work and when some people aren't right so to make sure that people are excited about your work make sure that you hear me out this is important okay make sure that you are aligning your work with the stuff that you're showing to people in the industry it doesn't make sense if you for example want to work for riot games right you want to work for league of legends but the art that you're showing is peppa pig right you're like hey can you look at my portfolio i got a lot of like peppa pig waifus and man i think you're gonna like it they're gonna look at it and they're gonna be like yo what is this if you want to really wow somebody you want to show them what they're expecting to see right there might be a studio that likes peppa pig waifus but for riot games they're probably not looking for that well actually in all seriousness right have something prepared have something that is aligned and that way when they look at your work they can say wow this is great this fits exactly what we're looking for um do you have an email do you have um, some socials that we can contact with or whatever right now that's the good case scenario <laughs> chances are you're not going to get the good case scenario and they might look at your work and they might be a little speechless here is the biggest advice i would give to you guys don't get upset all right don't take the criticism and get angry or get defensive i have done this many times right sometimes people will look at my work and they'll stop at one particular one and they'll say oh this one i don't know about this one this one's not really looking that good and then instead of me saying like oh yeah you're right uh could you tell me a little bit more instead what i used to do is like oh well it was actually an old piece that i did in 2018 and i was just like a beginner artist and like at that point dude if you're gonna make an excuse about your art don't put it in your portfolio you know what i'm saying chat like put in your best work that you are proud of and be ready to get criticism for it because that's what you're doing you're showing your work but if you're gonna get defensive about your stuff it's just not a good look for you because people are going to be like, whoa, this artist out here asked me to look at their stuff and now they're going to get all defensive about it. I don't know if I want to work with them. You get what I'm saying? You can take a look at it and you can ask them like, oh, can you explain a little bit more? Or you might even be able to do something like, oh, um, yeah, can you show me an example? Like they, they might say like, oh, your anatomy is a little off here on this one in particular. So then I might say, oh, I see what you're saying can you show me a, in one of my other pieces where maybe you feel like the anatomy is a little bit better huh all right you, you, so then that way you're flipping it and then they might be like oh yeah actually this one over here looks kind of good i feel like you really had a better grasp of your proportions here and see how you're flipping the script right you're trying to show them and try to also understand for yourself where am i doing well where am i wrong okay so that's like the big part right so they look at your work maybe they're not impressed and they might give you some feedback this right here is the biggest secret sauce i tell people who are trying to recruit and this is something i've told my recruiters as well who i'm friends with when i told them my secret they were shook they were like dude you're actually so smart and i didn't realize you did this are you guys ready for this here's the recap you've gone in you've introduced yourself you've chatted with them you've had a little bit of a good information you've gotten feedback about your work whether or not it's good or bad this is how you want to close this is how you want to close the conversation or actually let me show you how you don't want to close the conversation so 
they've looked at your stuff and you're out here and you're still standing and you're kind of like um thanks uh, are you free Friday don't do that don't ask him out on a date also don't just kind of like do nothing and just be like uh, nah. know when it's your time to step away from the conversation but make sure that you're doing it right so here's what I want you to do instead thanks for your time I really appreciate you looking at my stuff could I get your contact information so that I can follow up with you now let me explain why that singular phrase is a god tier secret strategy usually what networkers do what what you might do is you might say hey can i give you my card can i give you my instagram can i give you my email or whatever can you tell me what the problem is with that approach it might be hard it's very subtle but once i explain it you'll understand what i mean imagine that this recruiter is chatting with hundreds if not thousands of people as much as they like you and how good you are they might forget who your name is they might forget your social media they might forget to follow your instagram or your twitter or worse they might even lose your card right you give them this beautifully designed business card with all your information they might just lose it all right they're eating a little hot dog and whoop, they toss it in the trash and so boom they never know how to network with you and how to connect with you and so what you need to do instead is get their email okay get their social media and you reach out to them because i'm going to tell you an interesting statistic and this is something i've learned from chatting with other recruiters is oftentimes people don't follow up people don't follow up and so if you imagine this right there are a thousand people the recruiter chats with but you are one of the 10 people that reach out and actually follow up with them and they remember you it'll go a long way all right and so that right there is the secret sauce okay i want you to walk away with their information get their email get their social media get their linkedin get whatever but i want you to do it so that you are the one responsible for reaching out to them and there you go recruiting advice from KSM, how to network try it out when you go to your next art convention try it out when you get an interview or whatever have you and i hope this helps if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe if you're watching from youtube here is a bonus tip recruiters love it when you are just trying to chat with them and network with them and they don't feel like you are just there to get a job wait a minute Kasem. isn't it a job of a, of a recruiter to find people and give them jobs yes and no because here's the thing there are only ever really a few jobs at a given time that are available right that's not to say that there won't be jobs later in the future and so it's more important i think for you as an artist trying to network to just get on good terms with the recruiter get them to remember who you are and get them to feel like you're a good person even though i have a job i still take the time to chat with recruiters because i want them to remember me i want them to feel like whoa i chatted with that guy Kasem, and i like his stuff i like his personality i think he'd be good to work with and i might have a job five months down the line like there have been recruiters that have been surprised when i've come up to them and i've been like hey my name is Kasem, this and that i currently work in the industry and then they're like oh uh what kind of job are you looking for and i'll look him in the eyes and i'll say actually i'm employed right now i just wanted to chat with you and they're kind of like sometimes most times most times they're like <laughs> you know what i'm saying and they're kind of like wait you just wanted to chat with me and i'm like yeah i just wanted to hear about the studio i wanted to hear about your experience as a recruiter uh what are your thoughts on finding good talent out here you know what i'm saying and i tell you now they get shook they're like wait a minute this person just wanted to chat they're not even trying to get a job crazy so there you go even if you're not trying to look for a job or maybe you're not at that stage don't be afraid to chat with people because sometimes it will go a long way